Named after legendary explorer Sir Francis Drake, the Drake Passage is a treacherously dangerous pass. It's often considered to be one of the most difficult voyages a ship could make. It's situated between Cape Horn, Chile, and the southern islands of Antarctica. Waves can reach as high as 40 feet amidst freezing cold conditions. And that's before we even get into all the wretched creatures that are living in there. Hello once again my precious little ghouls and goblins. I'm Taylor, your casual crypt keeper, and I've brought you 5 spine chillers of stories for your listening pleasure. This is top 5 terrifying creatures found in the Drake Passage. Let me know down below in the comments if this is the first time you heard of any of these, or if you knew them already. Let me know if there's one we can feature in another video. Number 5, Ningen. Our first creature to grace this list is the Ningen. I've actually talked about these things on the channel before, but it's always good to get a refresher, especially when the subject in question is cryptids. This information might just save your life someday. Or at the very least, it gives you something interesting to talk about at a party. Either or, you're learning something today. The Ningen is a cryptid that is a large aquatic whale or seal-like humanoid entity. Ningen actually translates to human in Japanese, stemming from the creature's often humanoid appearance compared to other cryptids. Marked by its blank expression and indiscernible features save for beady black eyes, the Ningen is a 30 meter long heaving beast frequently spotted around the Arctic and Antarctic oceans. The Ningen first rose to prominence in 2012 when it caught mainstream public attention on a Japanese paranormal forum. The legend began when a user posted a story of a whaling research crew that was sailing through the passage and saw something they didn't recognize under the water. Initially the research staff assumed that it was a submarine, although there shouldn't have been any other vessels around. But they found that when they tried to get a closer look to ID the submarine, it had vanished entirely. While this was one of the first popularized cases of the Ningen, legends have actually predated this. With the first ever sighting thought to be traced back to 2005, when images from Google Earth revealed what looked like strange creatures inhabiting the area around icebergs. Skeptics believe that sightings of the Ningen could just be fragments of icebergs appearing to our eyes and we want to see them as monsters, but I'd argue a creature like the Ningen must have some degree of camouflage. It's an all white entity, it's reasonable to assume it evolved to avoid human eyes and blend in with the surroundings. It's unclear if the Ningen is a predatory cryptid, as all sightings of it reported as being benign or simply investigating humans. They don't appear to have any particular interest in aggravating us, as no attacks have ever been recorded or any cases of missing researchers involved. Perhaps it's as curious about what we are as we are curious of it. And hey, my delightful little ghouls and goblins, if you're curious about cryptids, well there's simply nowhere else on the internet that's going to satisfy you as much as Top 5 Scary. And maybe the Cryptid Wiki, but they don't do videos. So click through and subscribe to Top 5 Scary and keep the screams coming all night long. Let's keep going. Number 4, Garappa. Garappa the Rappa, sorry. Just Garappa. Garappa is an aquatic cryptid and not to be mistaken with its regional counterpart, the Kappa. Garappa, Arctic. Kappa, not Arctic. Write that down because there will be a test at the end of this video and if you fail, I don't know what will happen, but it's going to be bad. Garappa is so fun to say though. I'm going to throw that out there. Try that on for size at home. Tell me it doesn't feel fun coming out of your lips. I got to get on topic here. Similar to a Kappa, a Garappa is described as having long slender limbs like a frog or a monkey and a turtle shell on its back. It has a beak like a duck, long stringy black hair, and a bony plate or a dish on top of its head that also makes for a good ashtray. You'll recognize if a Garappa is around because of the call it makes, a distinct and forgive me for this if it's not perfectly accurate, hyo hyo sound. Although a garappa may appear outwardly threatening, a garappa is mostly shy creature, and they don't want the attention drawn onto them. I'm probably not helping the community much by discussing them here with you. They're shy and solitary, and usually keep to themselves, and usually tend to live in isolated communities by themselves, or with a few other garappa. Despite their shyness though, they are reported to be incredibly strong, and can easily overpower a human if a fight were to occur. Some legends report too that garappa are a bit of a prank and cause all kinds of mischief. They're able to mimic human voices. They say if you do capture one, a garappa will do anything it can to escape. Pleading with you, promising to leave people alone, to stop causing mischief, to stop luring people away, so they're not all bad. Number 3. Aklut Coming up next on the list is a beast called the Aklut. If we're ranking based solely on appearances, well, this is one of the coolest cryptids I have ever seen in my hundreds of years inside the fog making videos for this channel. The Aklut is an Inuit legend, and is sometimes described as the whale wolf, which, come on, that, that is the coolest thing I have ever heard, whale wolf. Depending on the legend, sometimes the Aklut is described as being a hybrid, chimera-like creature, looking like a wolf with like a fin on the back of it, but other times it's purported that it can alternate between the two forms at will, and take the form that it pleases to suit it best for whatever it needs. They're said to be around if you can find trails of paw prints and dog tracks that lead into ocean waters, or seeing dog tracks around where there shouldn't conceivably be any in the Arctic. 
The whale that an occlut takes the form of is predominantly described as an orca, and interestingly, another name for an orca is a sea wolf, lending some credence to the folklore. Stemming from early days beliefs when storytellers believed that all land animals had aquatic equivalents, like sea cows and so on. Not much is known outright about Aklut, instead what has passed from folklore. They're thought to be dangerously vicious towards humans, which makes sense considering both of the things that they are are pretty nasty with some gnarly teeth. There aren't too many recorded sightings, although if they're shape-shifting creatures, who's to say you haven't seen dozens upon dozens of them without even knowing? Unless you don't spend too much time in the Arctic, I suppose, then you probably haven't seen any. There is one legend in particular I found that stood out for me. It tells the tale of an Inuit man who becomes obsessed with the sea and wants to be part of it. He returns he turns from a fishing expedition to his village, but his obsession with the ocean has driven him too isolated to relate to the village anymore, and he finds himself in exile. He sets out and lives with a pack of wolves, but his affection for the ocean never dwindles. He casts himself out into the ocean to preserve himself forever in its waters, and through the malevolent energy inside him, he transforms into an orca. He spends his days swimming in the oceans as an orca, but whenever his hunger and his lust for revenge is awoken, he can return to the land and take a form as a wolf. Number 2. Hook Island Sea Monster The Hook Island Sea Monster is a sea monster that originates from Hook Island. Right? That's all the information we've got. Moving on. Okay. Oh, no. New information just came in. Okay. Yeah, this is good. The beast is a 90 foot long black sea monster that resembles a massive, massive tadpole. The thing was first sighted dating all the way back to 1964 by one Robert LeSalloc. LeSalloc was a sailor who was traveling with his family on an unknown expedition, who spotted the creature underneath the water moving towards his ship with what seemed like an open maw ready to strike. LeSalloc noted that its tail appeared to be damaged, but he was unsure as to what could have caused lacerations on such a massive entity. He described it as only when I got to within 20 feet of the creature that we could see its head clearly. The head was large, about 4 feet from top to bottom, with jaws about 4 feet wide. The lower jaw was flat like that of a sandfish. The skin was smooth, but rather dull, brownish black in color. The eyes seemed pale green, close to white. The skin looked like more like that of a shark than it did an eel. There were no apparent scales, nor did we see any parasites around. We supposed the flexible tail would have shaken any off. There were no fins or spines, nor were there any apparent breathing openings, although there had to have been some. Perhaps we didn't see them because our attention was focused mainly on the creature's menacing mouth, the inside of which was whitish. The teeth appeared to be small. A fragment of some dark substance hung from the upper row of teeth, possibly a fish. As the monster was lying on the sandy bottom, we could not see the color of its belly. The creature looked to be about 90 feet long. Behind its body was 2 feet 4 inches thick and remained that way for about 25 feet. Then it gradually tapers off into a whip-like tail. The general color of the body was black with 1 foot wide brownish rings every 5 feet. The first starting just behind the head. The skin was smooth but dull. Aside from this detailed description, Lacerat captured a few photos of the beast. Although there has been some argument and debate as to the validity of the photos. But you know, Photoshop didn't exist in the 1960s, so there's no way that these could be photoshopped. Duh. Number one, Organism 46B. Our number one creature is something called Organism 46B. Maybe it's an SCP that hasn't been classified yet. Organism 46 was discovered in Lake Vostok, a subglacial lake located under two miles of ice beneath the Vostok Station and the Antarctic, a Soviet research station established sometime in 1957. Organism 46B in question was an absolutely massive 33 foot long, 14 tentacled creature that displayed unimaginable abilities, some bordering on not being of this world. In studies it was shown to have limbs that were capable of retaining autonomy, aggression, and even animation after being separated. It's been purported to have a toxin inside its body that is capable of releasing to immobilize prey from far away, and all studies of it show that it is incredibly hostile. Makes sense. The legend of Organism 46b stems from an unknown date between February 2012 and November 2016. Pinpoint the location of that first true sighting has proved to be difficult. After 30 years of ice core drilling, miners at Vostok Station breached through to the lake in 2012, which is where the story comes from. The doctor who claims to have first discovered the creature is one Anton Padalka, although tracking him down has also been difficult. Entirely possible he's gone into hiding. He writes, We encountered this organism, which we named 46B, on our first day. 
It disabled our radio, which we later learned was intentional. It's also able to paralyze prey from a distance of 150 feet away by releasing venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and my lifelong friend lost his life this way. He tread water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its arms to tear off his head and then pop the remains in his mouth. It was as if he'd been hypnotized telepathically. Eventually, the crew was able to trap the creature in a tank, and the surviving team gave the organism off to the Russian government where presumably it was studied. But you want this Crypt Keeper's opinion? Almost certainly a beast like this was taken to the SCP Foundation where it could be properly secured, contained, and protected. I'd urge you to click through on the channel and hear some of our reports on the SCP Foundation if you're not familiar with the organization already. It's illuminating stuff. And that's going to be it for this video, my ghouls and goblins. Thanks so much for watching. Creep on, creeping on, and I'll see you in the next one. Child and the Southern. Pfft.